obviously a brand new prison right now. Gogum's Financial is not something that's uh, looking to come true right now. But we still have to look at other options. What is available out there to address our overcrowding issues. He adds a new prison with centralized housing would actually take care of the manpower shortage issues. Again, says the new prison idea is still being worked out with the administration. Overcrowded, it means having too many people or things. The local prison knows this word well. They live it. Prisoners packed in small cells, others left huddled on cots under a moldy dome tent, where most days the heat can feel unbearable. I'm Nick Delgado. Tonight, we bring you a look inside the Guam Department of Corrections prison, but this time, the staff and the prisoners are not holding back. This is a KUAM News special, the less than 1% of Guam. Right here at the Guidance Detention Facility to take our own tour. New prison, here we come. Oh. Let's get it. This is the Hagatni Detention Facility, a separate location away from the main prison in Manila. Even with the second location, the prison population has quickly grown just in 2023 by an additional 200 bodies. Correctional officers admit it's become too much for them to handle. The construction of a new and bigger prison continues to make its way through bureaucratic red tape. I'm going to talk to the inmates, let them know we're coming. We're going to do an interview in here, okay? okay. okay. Major Anton Uggen lets the prisoners know why we are here. Guys, li listen up, listen up, listen up. Uh, I don't know if I'm Major Ogun. Okay, I have KUAM here. Okay, hi, morning. I have KUAM here. I'm gonna do a. Um, we're doing a brief story on the overcrowding issues, right? To show the conditions and the overcrowding. Uh, I'm gonna have Nick. Nick's gonna interview me here with you guys on the background. So just be, uh, you know, be respectful. I mean, don't don't be too hard, but yeah, let them know the conditions are pretty bad, right? And you know, we are trying our best to to do this to you know deal with you guys but you know a lot of our decisions whether you're here or not it's not with us it's with the courts right the courts and the AG so just be a little respectful we're gonna do that video as a precaution the prison special operations response team known as sort joined us during our visit off day gentlemen hey. 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 hey thanks for having us because I want the, I wanted to around, see, hey, you know, okay. what's going on, right? Okay. All right. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Major ass hug it. There's a lot in one cell. It looks like. Uh, yes. Uh, as you can tell, uh, all our cells here. This is all the, uh, the. You know, local detainees, some of the local detainees, some of them are in Manila, but yeah, our population right now in local detainees department-wide is about 460. Our overall population is 863. So, you know, our numbers are pretty high. That's right a record? Now. That is the record right now, yes. Yes. In January, we're 680. Okay. And now we're 863. And we're about 40%, and 40% of them are detainees. A record high. Cells here are already filled to max capacity, 
And at this rate, the prison predicts the population could reach 1,000 soon. The Department of Corrections, whether the detainees or they're convicted of their crime, mm -hmm. they're supposed to work on corrections of these individuals, correct? But uh, being penned up and crowded in, the, in one unit like this. That's the ideal Department of Corrections. Yeah. But at this point, because of our high numbers, um, I personally think we're more of a jail now. We actually, our, 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 our detainee population, including federal, immigration, contempt of court, probation violators, warrant of arrest, and overnighters, we outnumber our sentenced inmates. Our sentenced inmate is 330 sentenced inmates. Everything else are, is basically detainees. But most, all these guys are basically innocent till proven guilty, and they're still just going through the judicial process. So these are just five, I'm seeing five cell. Yeah, this is only just one, one, one wing of the Ghana detention facility. How many is in this wing? How many is in this wing? 23 are right here. 23 in yeah. five cells. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. And we have more over there, on that side, and then behind this wall here, there's some more there. Also, then we have a Delta block that has, again, a few more. And then on the next facility over, we have probably over 100 next door in the other building. Can we talk to some of the guys here, see how they feel about the conditions and? Sure. Yeah? Sure. Hey, guys. Anyone down to talk to us? Just about the conditions here. So I don't, I, I don't, I'm, I'm out of, some of these guys that don't get canteen, don't get, don't get a, a emergency income. I have to buy my clothes here. What do you do to pass the time in here? Close 23 Play cards, talk to the other inmates. The, the guards treat us pretty fair. Yeah. Um, it's just that the, the housing, look at the tiles, all broken. We do need help. We do need help. But it's it's the, the government. I, I've been doing time since I was young. And the city got worse. Detainee Mike Flores admits he's been here before. Flores says the conditions are only getting worse. So I've been here six, uh, almost seven months. My next court hearing is December 28th, 20th. It's a pretty tight space, Mike. Yes, it's a two man cell, but there's three of us. We two sleep in the floor, one sleep in the bunk. Because it leaks up there with that. Uh, water in this thing. See? Yeah. Water inside. It leaks. Every time it rains, it drips, drips, drips. So about this bucket, our room will be flooded. I've been here a long time here before. This thing used to be all open bay. But this is the first time I came back here in, in, in 22 one. It's very hard. What's the toughest thing about being caged up like this? Seeing the family. Does it impact your health at any time when you're in here? We don't, we don't know if that's that the bestest material or what, but it does leak. So someone out there should take, take, take concern and help us. I'm 59. It's help that others here believe may never come. All five of you. One cell. Yeah. Yes, in one cell. Yeah. I sleep on the ground. Yeah. Y'all, y'all are okay with us being on, be on camera? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, love you, Mom. Detainee Jason Leon Guerrero shows us his cramped cell. First and last name, please. Uh, Jason Leon Guerrero. Jason, what have you been here? Uh, family violence. Yeah, it's already been up to seven months. I've been up to two years. And still waiting for a court date. Five of you men here, four bunks is what I'm seeing. Yes. Keep coming back. And you all have to share. Sometimes one person has to get the floor, sometimes there's no, there's no mattress, and you know, just pray for another day. Another day where they get at most one hour outside of this tight space. How do you pass the time to be comfortable? Because I, I was hearing from your one of the others down there, it's 23-1. 23 and 1. 23 and 1. Yeah. We have to, when one needs a restroom, we have to call it out R&R, &R, and we have to wait until the other the other cells. cells are clear, and then that's when we go out. Sometimes we only have like 15 minutes to shower, and then five minutes hygiene. Let it out. It's not a place to be. What's the worst thing about the conditions? 
the worst. This is like a. Uh, look at our roof. This is like Disneyland here, actually. This is one of the. Our roof beach. Blocks. Blocks. This is one of the nicest blocks. Or like, this is like heaven, not like in up in Manila. It's kind of, I feel like sometimes they don't eat. And what? yeah, yeah but this, this here, look at this. It looks up there. One of the kind of. Detainee Johnny Kaisian echoes the conditions here are rough. Oh, it's been hard in here, uh, as you guys can see. Overcrowded in here. <laughs> Lots of leaks. It's been hard, especially with uh, I think uh, there's about five of us in here. Tight. Do you Very see tight in here? I see there's mattress on the floor too. Yes, there's, there are mattress in here. One guy sometimes has no mattress, like this case here, one of them doesn't have mattress, or two, without mattress. You, you describe it as it's very tight in here. Why is that an issue? It's overcrowded, it's just too much. Actually, these cells are supposed to be, I think, four or three people in here. But as you can see, it's over, over four and three. Does this affect you mentally? It, it does. How? It's, I don't know how to describe it. How much in this whole? 50. 50? 50 people sharing. Sharing this one bathroom. Yeah. All right, let's go in. Go ahead, go ahead. So four toilets, but only two are working? Two are working, yes. Part of the time out of the cells is spent here. And this is for the population of 50. There's 50, there. this is called the Haganu Detention Facility. Mm -hmm. Um, next door is the federal detention facility, we refer to it. And so the 50 people that are living here, they share this restroom because all their cells are dry cells. So when they need to use the restroom or shower, they're escorted in here to do, you know, to do their business. And uh, two of them, like I said, don't work. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, uh, just infrastructure uh, issues. These buildings don't get any breaks. People are constantly using it. And over time, it, it, you know, the plumbing uh, issues. So, And a lot of times, again, because the, the constant, we have a lot of issues with the plumbing. We change it, but it breaks again. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes between here and Manila, we don't have enough money in the purchase orders and stuff to get all the materials that we need. So we kind of have to just respond to what's uh, emergency. Again, says with funding still tight, they are left prioritizing emergency needs. This is why we've been, one of the reasons why we've been trying to push for the new facility. Yeah. So all these other issues can be addressed. In the other wing. Okay, Lisa. The temperature is much warmer in here. The cells here are also packed. Yeah, for this block. How many are in this block? 17, 17 are live here in this block. This is called Charlie Block. Mm -hmm. uh, the aircon is not working. We're having, you know, we gotta get it replaced. How long has it been out? Maybe uh, before the typhoon. Mawar? Yeah. yeah, prior to typhoon. And, and, and you know, it's a, it's, you know, probably a five-ton aircon, so it's you know it's a pretty big one. But in the alternate, we have the fans. Um, there's one down here, but three individuals. Okay. Working in these conditions also puts the officers at risk. How many officers on duty? Two officers right now are on duty to run this, this, that block over there, and we have a delta block right across from where we came in. Mm -hmm. There's a delta block there. Okay. So that two officers have to run all of that. The staffing shortage is felt here tremendously. And this is never unmanned, yeah. supposed to be. But if you only have two officers here, sometimes he has to get up and deal with the other activities going on. Because okay. this one could be out there getting the gate. Sarge, welcome back. Of course we have issues with contraband, because look how close that is to, that's a public easement, I can't block that. So we've had people come, Nick, and throw contraband over. Uggen says the aging facility is in desperate need of repair. Yeah, this is the generator we're trying to get repaired. Nick, this generator does not work. Okay. How long has that been out? It's been out since prior to the storm. Uh, like which, which years are, prior? No, no, no. A couple months or so before the storm. 
And we're, we're trying to, we got to get someone to be reevaluated. Meaning the prison was in the dark during the recent power outages. This is called the Federal Detention Facility. And how many? But out of, out of the, what's your population here, Gogui? 122, sir. 122? 100. So out of the 122 that are here, okay, 25 of them or 24 of them are federals. Everybody else here, uh, 24 federal, five are immigration, and the rest are all local detainees. Six immigration. Six immigration, and then the rest are local detainees. Okay. How many officers on duty? Uh, three on this side. Three on this side. Two on, on the other side. Wow. We should have at least five here. Th one for each block, one for the control, again control, and then one to rove around. But right now we're running it with three. This part, the conditions are no better, even for this group of men who are confined in an open bay. This is all meant to help us and let the public know that we're, the struggle's real in trying to keep the population and how we're doing business, right? Okay, come and say, bring him in. Bring him in. So all of these guys eventually started from over there and they come over this way. How would you guys, if I had to ask, just kind of whoever wants to ramble off in one word, how would you describe your living conditions here? Uh, overcrowded. Overcrowded? Very Good one. Overcrowded here. Yeah. Improper bedding. And prop, improper bedding yeah. for you? Anyone else? Sure. Just another day, huh? Yeah. They probably act a little bit more. That's worse. It gets worse. The sort team is pulled away to respond to a prisoner getting rowdy. The prisoners we are with continue to share. This building needs to place most of us. Most of us have to pull up our beds and put it in here because we're using the crack. Uh, there's cracks in the roof. Yeah, and fix the roof. The whole floor was flooded. Okay. Yeah. And and that's why our, our beds are. And we took some of it off because it stinks and all that. They got wet. Yeah. We we are uh, Nick. We are ordering mattresses and stuff. Shit. We are ordering mattresses and stuff. That sound is sort officers forced to take non-lethal action to calm the prisoner. Major Uggen will tell us in the next room what just happened. For now, these men say they are worried for their health. There's a lot of people that transfer to the medical ward due to the. Like, Whatever those green ones and stuff they get from the molding and the stuff. I never thought of that. So, yeah, right. so you guys' health is really affected by mm -hmm. what happened with the aftermath of the storm mm -hmm. and still having to live with yeah. what you got. Right. Yeah. I know we did we did do our crime, we deserve to be in here, but if they can treat us a little bit more than the animals they think we are, because we're not animals. We just um, we're, we're trying problem. our best to fix ourselves. Yeah. yeah, we just need to be treated like human. A space that's also tested those being held here. What just happened when we were in that other room there? So while we were doing our uh, talking to those other detainees, we had some other detainees in this block that acted up, uh, required our special operations response team to deploy their FN 303. You can still hear him. And they're still yelling. Uh, we have medical coming to look at the individual that was shot with the non-lethal weapon. And so as you can hear, they're, you know, they're, uh, they're a little rowdy right now. In prison, if you don't move fast, very fast, a certain small intuition as inmates arguing can turn into a fluke of a riot in just a matter of seconds. Because when you have 
you know, as many people as we have in these blocks, one little outburst, if we don't respond and quell it as soon as possible, can lead to several of them getting involved or, or you know, uh, causing more, more uh, commotion. This is the reason why a lot of these damages is from inmates who were frustrated. Uh, this goes back years though. Uh, and they damaged their cell and damaged government property. Do you think that we would see, just in your experience, calmer? If they weren't in their cell all the time, if there was less people, uh, cellmates, because each cell is only designed to hold two. But sometimes there's three to four of them in there for 20 some hours a day. So, so of course that builds up frustration, right? And uh, on top of their own the personal issues they have with their family and all the things running through their head, it's frustration. That's why sometimes just yelling, yelling and letting it out is one way of them dealing with it. Our final stop this visit, Delta Block. There's 15 individuals in here now. There's three to that cell. Uh, how many there? Three? Three. Three? Three. Three, three. three there. How many there? Three? Three. Three. It's another area with a similar situation. We come out every hour. Every hour? Yeah. They rotate we'll the rotate. cells? Hour, 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 hour. Yeah. Throughout the day. But it's like you just move in from one cramped space to another. Yeah, so it's like congested, kind of congested. Yeah, we deal with it. Dealing with it is all they have for now. Show them the shower. Go show them the shower. And he had half the guys in the other unit come over here and use these facilities, right? These guys are all, all these people that are living here. This is the, their shower. Yeah. So it's either Looks like only two, two showers. Look at the, they can't even, they try to get the apartment trying to investigate as much money as they can. Check out their, uh, this is their curtain. Yeah. Then you look at their, their spot. Ah. Uh, the faucet spot. It's not a problem, but it's a risk. Yeah. As for how to fix the overcrowding, could the answer be a new prison? It's an 80 year plan, uh, phase one through 10, that will bring us up to 2,000, over 2,000 prisoners, but we were only looking to build phase one through four, which would have given us 1,100 beds. Uh, based on our thing, it would cost about $200 million. But that was more than two years ago. So Is that just with one facility? Because all of it, is, yeah. But they're combined again? And no, uh, it, we, would, we would get out of here. This would bring everybody up to Manila into uh, one building. And on shut the down. same property? Yes, on the same property where our VRS is at, our mm -hmm. uh, auto shop and everything is mm -hmm. at. So we're going to Manila next. Yeah. Is it, conditions are better? Uh, it, it just depends because in Manila we have a little bit more housing units up there. And each housing unit, each housing unit, uh, uh, there's what, 16 housing units in Manila? Yeah. So the one of the issues right now up there is the domes. The mm -hmm. domes are one of our major issues because the air cons don't work. And again, each each dome to repair the air con is, you're looking at about $60,000 each. We'll take a look at the details of it when we go visit there, but yeah. to the question again. Yeah. Now that we saw just how bad things continue to be here in Aganya, is Manila better or worse? Not much more better, no. They're equally, you know, depending on the housing unit you visit, yeah. it could be a lot worse.
a lot worse according to the major, and it really does get worse. Take a look. So sometimes I, I feel like, uh, you know, I uh, want to be treated fairly. We have leaks down here. You know, how can we, how can we be housed properly? There's things back there that are broken. Frustrated, you're going through their own their own problems with their court cases and their sentence. And then when you have the heat, anything else, the frustration happens. Then, like I said, you have 20 some guys in here, different attitudes, different problems. And at times, you're going to have people clashing. Stay tuned for part two where we take you inside the main facility in Manilao. We're not animals. That's what prisoners at the Guam Department of Corrections say about their current living conditions. The staff also in desperate need of help to safely keep watch of the population. Each day is the security and a health risk, and the financial woes leave the staff at DOC with no other option but to buy supplies with their hard-earned money. I'm Nick Delgado, this is a KUAM News special, the less than 1% of Guam. After showing you the poor state of the prison in the capital city of Hagatnya, DOC gives us a look inside its main facility in the central village of Manila. And what we experienced is a place considered tough for most human beings. This is the only place adult women can go if taken into DOC custody. Sergeant Catherine Cruz is the Post 8 Women's Facility Unit Manager. We are managing the duty of the women alone. Two officers here to manage 55 prisoners is not enough. 55 women? Yes. Average? Uh, it's, been, it's up and down. But it's not more than 60. But it's always been about 50 in the last two years. Should we take a look at the area? Sure. Ladies, away from your door. Okay. If you would like to speak to KUAM, please stand at your door. Likewise, male on the floor, make sure you're properly dressed. Are we good? Yes, ma'am. So, extra sensitivity, extra precautions that have to be taken when in this unit seems, versus when we're in the unit with the men. I think we're basically the same, but the men is more overpopulated than us. We're at 50, they're at 70, 80, and sometimes it's only one officer there. We're lucky that I'm here and there's three because I just came back from there. Keeping watch here has become her career, but pride in the job is, well, she can tell you herself. This is two man cell, yeah. and we have three. Yeah, so similar. Yes. So this is... This is a uh, uh, high population right now. We haven't had this much females in here in the facility in a long, long time. So what we're experiencing right now is overcrowding. And then when these females come in, we have to accommodate those that are coming off the street, whether they're drunk, high. So we have to segregate them. 
so they don't hurt each other or hurt themselves. Then we have to single cell individuals that are put on a special suicide watch or close observation. They have to be single cell. So that causes another problem. And what we have now is individuals that are committed, that are clients of the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. So they're committed here. So we have about seven, seven females here. And then we have to segregate them from the population. Two officers per shift? If we're lucky, we get three or four, but majority of the time there's only two. And so we really do need help. Having more officers, she says, would even offer the women some fresh air. For now, that's not possible. Versus right now, the two officers, they usually just control movement. We do what we can. We afford them the showers, you know, their personal hygiene, because that's their right. She admits it all falls back to their safety and security. It cannot be compromised. We have to control the movement because we don't know who has conflict here. And a lot of times we don't know until somebody gets hit. You know, that's unfortunate for us. We have to deal with this every day. The prisoners here feel the staff's pain. How's it been? There's three of you, two bunks. Yes. One has to sleep on the ground. Sometimes most of the time, a little complicated, like they said. How does it make Sometimes you? we don't even have bunks. Mattresses or blankets. Yes. Yeah, for them to give out. Or sometimes we don't have like, towels or some materials that are supposed to be given to us. So we barely get it because of the stop. Yeah, that's their experience I've had. How does it make you feel? Uh, kind of like the government or the insurance is not giving, me, not giving it out of time. Yeah. Treated less than a human? Some, sometimes. Detainee Angelica Tysikin says the officers do their best. Does this feel like a place where you can better yourself or work towards bettering yourself? Yes. Even with these conditions? Even with the conditions. The officers need time to talk to us. Yes. What What else do you hope could be better? Uh, to make it better? More officers, more help, and the government. And that's coming from you as, a, as an inmate. Here. Yes, as an inmate. Their lack of uh, officers, so now all of them get attention. But she says each day can be a waiting game. Let's say they have a conflict. Like, we all have to wait on phone calls, all have to wait on, you know, like things that are just like marriage. Nothing that was a serious emergency, though, as uh, far as. No, when, when, when they have emergencies, they do stop whatever they're doing to come in and tell to us. Anything else you want to say? No. Thank you. Just lack of officers. They need more. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Part of the officer's job is also to keep it clean and sanitized. So we need the equipment, the supplies to keep it uh, sanitized. Okay, you smell it, it smells good, right? When you go to a mail unit, you'll smell the difference. Because we take money out of our own pocket, the officers here. You and guys we, pay for this. Yes, we do. Because we want it to be sanitized. That's our standard. You know, so. And you have to work here. Oh, absolutely. And we have to smell it. So if we don't like the smell, we have to do something about it. So we reach into our own personal pocket and we, we buy. We buy cleaning supplies. We buy brooms. We buy toilet cleaners, Clorox, laundry soap. We purchase out of our own pocket and I'm not I don't want to be reimbursed I just want give me the supplies we need to provide for these individuals because it is our responsibility to provide this to them a lot of things like Everybody getting irritated and all that stuff is just because of, um, I guess, the uh, population is too, it's too overpopulated. Crispina Rachelup says keeping a cool head on her shoulders is part of the challenge. How does this make you feel? Um, sometimes I do get irritated, like when it's too, um, because we, it's so it's so many, they can, there's just so many, a uh, little of the staff, so you know, they cannot really get everything so that they're rushing us to either get into the shower and stuff. 
Do you feel like human? Like you're being no. treated like human? No, sometimes I, I feel like, um, you know, it's, I, uh, when I'm being treated fairly. Like most of the prison, no working generators. When the power goes out, you know how we're doing this load shedding? Yeah. We are in the dark. We are in the dark. There is no generator power. Since the typhoon, we had a generator that was given to us by Homeland. And as soon as we got hooked up on island power, they took the generator away. So we don't have a generator. So we are in the dark when the power goes out. Quite often. Yes. The help is needed. This detainee shares how officers help them out as well. We, they, we get crochet um, yarn and we can make projects. This is like a laundry bag. Um, some of the officers have donated to us at, on a wide scale. Um, they afford us artwork, uh, therapeutic, very therapeutic, you know, it calms our mind. And then um, they afford, when it's holidays, they afford us stuff like this color paper and then we can make like um, stuff for our families, you know, and we can send it to them. Small gestures to keep her calm so she can focus on rehabilitation. And look, we have leaks, we have toilet shower heads that are broken, we have leaks down here. You know, how can we, how can we help properly? There's things back there that are broken because of problematic prisoners, you know? So if anything, if we can get any assistance, please, please give us some assistance to better enhance our own facility. Thank We're you. still human. Let's not forget that. Thank you. A shared feeling for others locked up here. that area where all those old cars are at yeah up there where minimum in is out post 24 that entire area up there will be the new uh, where our plan is at this point to put the new facility but the reality is there's no plan to fast track building a new facility major Anton Uggen brings us next to post 17 the special operations team is back to escort us we are told there is 75 inmates among the three blocks in this unit it's hot in here whoa I, I, did I walk inside or outside? It feels hot. <laughs> Serious question, when I look in this block, people live in here? <laughs> yes. This is why, Nick, I'm saying the, the condition and with the overcrowding, I, ideally, again, 20 would be the, the for per block, 20 yeah. would be the our manageable number, but because of overcrowding, if I had to put more in here, the air, the air con issues don't help. Yeah. Uh, we are trying to get it fixed, but again, a lot of it takes money and resources. I can get quotes all day long, but even with the quotes, if we can't get vendors to fix it... Fans provide slight relief from the heat. In the other block, inmate Anthony Kenga is set up in the middle of the block. We're crowded in here, and now that you're all here, you notice his window's open, the other side, but since the typhoon, and just until recently, maybe a week ago, they finally opened this up, but prior to that, it was hot in here. It's still You're talking hot. 93 degrees even at 5 36 o'clock <clears throat> in the evening at the thermostat here that can tell you that. But um, it is hot. And with 25 guys or 24 guys in here, man, can you imagine the heat and the air not moving around? And, and another, the population's only growing. Yes. So how do you feel personally? Anthony? Well, mentally, of course, people get frustrated. You're going through their own their own problems with their court cases and their sentence, and then when you have the heat, anything else, the frustration happens. Then, like I said, you have twenty some guys in here, different attitudes, different problems, and at times you're going to have people clashing. You know what I mean? Even if it's just mouth, but it happens, and the rest of us have to deal with that. To deal with an environment that fuels frustration. So when there's no air con here, and then us having to wash and wash our clothes, mm -hmm. and then we dry it, and that was for a few months or so, two months, and uh, an inmate ended up having to donate two washers for our unit, which was 
we're thankful for that. But, you know, all of these different things combined just makes it really uh, Shows why help is needed. Frustrating, yes. In the next block, it's cooler here. You know, this aircon is on a band-aid solution. Yeah, it's it, a lot more livable when you consider... A little bit, but it's only temporary because the aircon goes down also a lot too. And it gets super hot in the evening time. In the evening, it's going to really get hot. And when the power goes out? Right. And the power goes out, there's no generator, right? No. Yeah, so when the power goes out, the 9 p.m. load shedding, mm -hmm. uh, for one hour, there, it, it's, you know, you're on your own. Resources and money to get things fixed continues to be the struggle. Uh, the building is so old. Uh, maintenance, just trying to keep it up is, is, is tough, especially with the increase in population. The, the, the plumbing lines under the building, you know, a lot of them need to actually be replaced or even uh, surfaced, you know, just run through the surface because it's, it's, the building is just really old. And sometimes we got leaks, we don't even know where it's at. Inmate Jeremy Isaac shows us their shared bathroom in disrepair. Also makeshift thing. Yeah, makeshift, and then our toilets. This one doesn't even barely flush, and this one is leaking. The guys are saying that in their toilet over there, they cannot even do that too. They have to share. It's probably worse over there, but same, same problem. What about the showers? This one doesn't even run. Good, that's it. Same thing anywhere, any other post I'll go to, it feels like the same thing. But it's just the uh, hygiene wise, it's kind of bad. And being in these closed quarters, it, the population we're seeing isn't getting any smaller. It's grown by 200 just this year. Yes, also recidivists as well, so it's probably the same people coming in. Mm -hmm. No. But um, yeah, I think it's growing. How does it make you feel though? I know you said it's gel, but how do you, how do you, you hope it? Uh, I think there should be more help, more help to us. You know, help as in the government giving us help to treat ourselves, you know, rehabilitate ourselves instead of really just sit around here all day and not do anything. There's not really much program, so we just wait it out. And when we get out, it's kind of worse because we haven't really learned anything. This block at one point was a library, now shut down to accommodate for the growing numbers. Other areas face a similar fate. Adding another 30 people in here would cause another issue, a rippling effect on in regards to even the, the plumbing. Our last stop, the domes. Open bays with the population bundled together on cots and bunks, and inside, the heat is real. I don't want people to forget the conditions that we're going through. Mostly you guys, not, you know, not me. You know, you know, I go home, but you guys suffer through this. I am trying to get those air guns fixed, okay? It's just <laughs> trying to get the money to get it fixed because it's 43000 to fix it. Detainee Joshua Chargloff has been here since April. Uh, this is nothing. It actually is. It gets hotter and, you know, as the time of the day goes on. Yeah. How do you guys survive? There's 70 of you in here. Yes. Yeah, well, our numbers fluctuate, but so right now, I uh, want to thank everyone for you know just cooperating and going along with it because, like you said, the heat is really it gets pretty intense. So. Just do our best, lay down, and try to get our minds off the heat, take showers, stuff like that. That plus staying underneath moldy ceilings. This Does this leak already? No. Yeah. The mold falls on you. Yeah, when we do our checks on our towels, man. I was going to ask about that if you look up at all the... We walk down the line to the other tent structures. Anybody want to talk to the media? Now is your chance to talk to the media about your living conditions. I'm giving you that chance about your situation here. Detainee Mariano Canata says the lack of air conditioning is a problem. It's been all right until we uh, had our aircon down. We've been living like this for about a year. A year? Uh, about a year or so, yeah. A little I've, bit over I've a year. I've been in here for a minute. It is so unbearably hot. Yes, yeah, so can you imagine how we feel about it? It's really hot. And the heat is just part of what's worse, how, you, how it's making you guys feel. Yeah, no, it's more like there's not only just the heat, there's no ventilation, no nothing. We got how many fans, it's still super hot. 
regardless on the circumstance of just heat or not. There's no ventilation for nothing for us to move. How does it make you feel daily? I mean, messed up. Unbearable, but we have no choice but to live with. And this is a spot where you're supposed to work towards rehabilitation, right? Bettering yourself to get back into society. Ideally, that's what the Department of Corrections is for. But this is a this is a rough situation. More like suffering and pain than trying to recorrect anything that we've done right or wrong. What do you hope for? What's your message? The leaders are listening. Um, let's just give us back some aircon and look at our living standards and give it a little better thought or no? Yeah. We're not animals. A growing health concern. Prisoner John Salas admits they are suffering in here. Well, the aircons are broken for over a year, the mutu. The raw sewage outside and the restroom usage is every other hour, so we're suffering and uh, it's been long enough. How does, it, how does it affect you personally? How does it make you feel? Oh man, sometimes I shower like seven times a day. Just to cool off? Just to cool off. Um, like I said, the raw sewage outside, mosquitoes. I have got uh, detainees here that are getting heat rash, you know, and it's, it's really bad. The mutu. They get uh, sick easily. Yes. Very. Heat stroke, heat rash. Yeah. Whatever you can get from the heat, you get it here. You find it here. A rough situation even with the fans. Much, you're just so limited for stuff to be done in here besides uh, play cards, dominoes, or yeah. just try to get along, you know what I mean? Yeah. But besides that, it's mentally challenging and uh, the health risk. Yeah, you got asthmatic people, people's skin sensitive. In the next dome, 61 prisoners. These guys are inmates and they're not like detainees. So detainees, just remember detainees, I can match 70. Then they, the, the next week they'll be back down to 65. These guys here, I'm 61. You're stuck. And they just stagnant I'm, I'm until stagnant. they finish. I, I got, as you can see, these guys are the new ones that came up from Aganya. Uh, overflow, right? Yeah, the overflow, but I, I, got, I got no bumps. Right outside, hand-washed clothes are hung on the fence and barbed wire. Shipping containers are used for the dome population bathrooms. And raw sewage flows out onto the yard and even down toward other neighboring posts. All up there? Slow down into where post five is at. I'm doing it. Post five itself already has its own sewage issue. So if you were to like, let's say, walk the perimeter and you walk over there, you would sink at least a good four feet down. Yeah. So this is all raw sewage. An environmental concern the prison can't afford to address right away. More reason DOC officials want a new prison fast. We have complaints and we have grievances and we try um, our best to deal with the issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Although as you see the air cons, a lot of air con issues are happening. Well, we went out and we purchased big industrial fans. Uh, and we're trying to look at portable air cons as a band-aid solution right now to keep the temperature, keep it cool. We've uh, We've actually decreased some of our security by, as you see, post 17. We had to take the plexiglass off the windows, yeah. which potentially allows more contraband to come in. But the worst of two evil is the heat. You know, we have to address the heat. I know that it's a it's an 80 year plan as a whole, but walk me through real quick what what we would see immediately in this lifetime. Phase four will give us bed space of 1,100, just under 1,200 beds. By what time frame? Well, once they award the contract, I mean, construction alone could take about two years, maybe more, depending on the, okay. that thing. So okay. we're hoping in less than five years, if depending on the timeline of the project, again, our master plan was done since 2021. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we still haven't started anything. I know DPW is working on getting architectural services done. But even after that, you, you still have to identify the funding to actually pay for the project. However, you're going to do that and then put that out for bid and go through that whole process. So it could still be a few years before you even uh, shovel your first dirt. And after that, the construction itself could take, what, two years maybe, depending, you know. 
Uh, there's so many factors to consider, mm -hmm. labor, labor shortage and all these other issues, but mm -hmm. we need help now and it's only getting worse. And so we're, we're, that's why I'm, that's why, uh, you know. Since you guys also handle immigrations and the federal population, mm -hmm. what are the chances of the feds also intervening, getting involved or, or even or asking for oversight we of have. the prison? No, we have not done any of that. That would be on, uh, that's uh, beyond my pay grade to yeah. ask for anything like that. Uh, our federal population is about 24, mm -hmm. and our immigration is about eight. Yeah. We don't have a lot. So it's not large enough. No. But we did reach out when we were doing our master plan if there was any opportunity for funding. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, on their side, there's not really much opportunity. The federal government is just not building prisons. So, you know, funding on that side is very hard. We have, in the past, spoken with uh, our congressmen, uh, both Sir Nicholas and Moylan, uh, St. Nicholas when we were doing the plan and Moreland when he became congressman. Yeah. And of course, a lot of it again on the federal side, there's just not a lot of money out there going towards new prisons. So this looks like this may be a, a government problem that we have to try to figure out ourselves. Will this be the DOC that we see for at least the next five years then? It probably would be, yes. The next 10 years? I hope not. Yeah. You know, Why not? I, I hope not. Because at our current rate right now with the crime, the, the number of people here, we're at 800 and 865 today and I, I want to make it clear Nick this overcrowding issue did not happen just within the last four years or five years or six years this overcrowding I started here in 1994 in 94 we were overcrowded and other directors have done little projects like post 16 Aganya but we've never had a master plan until 2021 but this overcrowding issue is it's only getting worse but it I want to make it clear it didn't start under this administration or the previous one or the previous one before that yeah it's a continuing issue that just keeps going and you know on top of all the other issues we have with it's the a government, continuing it's issue that still has yet to be fixed fixed right but we're hurting now and i don't think there's no sign of any of it slowing down our numbers are going to continue to go up i'm you know anticipating we could hit 900 before the end of the year mm -hmm. if things keep going the way they're doing 900 and we would just have to accommodate. That's all DOC can do. What, what can we do? We can't turn people away yeah. when they're coming and they need to be confined. We're at the end of the food chain here. But that's at the risk of your officers. It is, and we are hiring 30 some officers and we're trying to hire 20 more after that, but we're still all, always playing catch up. Yeah. And then out of the 30, some will probably resign or go to other jobs down the road. We anticipate that, but we have to keep, keep going, keep, keep in the fight. We've got to stay in the fight. Yeah. Okay. And we're very fortunate these inmates as you see on the tour they were not they were not too rowdy uh, or you know you didn't feel threatened but they they admitted to me that they, they can get there it can especially with the conditions yes okay but that's where we work with our officers and and you know a lot of officers their their training their uh, we don't carry a lot of weapons we do have our special operations response team to respond if the event things go south but a lot of it relies on my officers to handle the daily daily uh, stress mm -hmm. And they do a good job because you don't see anything really happening. Sometimes it does happen, but... Like what we saw in Aganya. Like what we saw in Aganya when we were there. But they responded and took care of the situation without getting it any worse. Okay. Thanks, Anton, for the yeah. time. So, so as you can even see, even our operation. So even, Nick, even our management team, not just the inmates, but even the warden's office and the management, you want to go in there? This is not just the inmates and the management living in cool air cons. Yeah. Management in here, go in here, it's hot also. This is the warden's area. It is also very hot in here. In opening up to KUAM about the poor and seriously dangerous situation they face on the inside, DOC officials want me to share that the point of this isn't to place blame on anyone, the staff, and as you heard echoed even by the prisoners, they need help. They need a solution, whether it's through community partnerships or other means to help make working and living at DOC bearable. Remember, it's you, the taxpayers, that also foot the bill. Thank you for watching this KUAM special, The Less Than 1% of Guam. I'm Nick Delgado. Be safe, everyone.